about this tutorial. We are still on moment of forces. Today we are going to look at the conditions required for a body to be at equilibrium under the action of parallel coplanar forces. And then we are also going to solve problems involving moment of forces and also involving double pivot, both single pivot and double pivot system um, from previous or past intervention bodies. So stay connected as we go to the to this topic of moment, which is the main rock of maintenance. If you are not subscribed to the channel, try do well to subscribe by tapping on the on the bell or the subscription icon on the channel and get subscribed for more videos. As we watch the videos, try to share it out to students in senior secondary school, students in their first year or second year doing general physics in high institution, they also do this topic. So we're going to go over now to the whiteboard and look at the conditions required for a body to be at equilibrium under the action of a single of forces. So we'll go to the whiteboard. So the conditions for a equivalent action of non-parallel coplanar forces. So for a body to be at equilibrium under the action of non-parallel coplanar forces. So there are two many conditions for a body to be at a when it is acted upon by non-parallel forces, that is forces whose lines of action do not meet. The first is that, is that the total moment of forces about any axis perpendicular to the about any axis perpendicular to the plane of forces must be zero. So the total or the or the right sum of moment of forces about any axis Perpendicular to the plane of forces must be zero. Or we can say total clockwise moment must be equal to total anti clockwise moment. So the, the first condition for a body to be at equilibrium when acted upon by a system of forces is nothing but the principle of moment. We state that the algebraic sum or the total moment of forces about any axis perpendicular to the plane of forces must be zero, or simply put this way, total clockwise moment must be equal to total anti-clockwise moment. So that's the first condition for an object to be at a equilibrium when acted upon by Coplanar non parallel forces. So we're going to take a diagram to illustrate this. To illustrate this condition, let us draw a beam or an object. And then, as we now have a pivot, it's pivoted here. We have forces, for instance, force F1 down here, force F2. The perpendicular distance between F1 and the pivot, let's call it A. Perpendicular distance between F2 and the pivot, let's call it B. On the other side of the pivot, they have force F3 and then force F4. The perpendicular distance between force F3 and pivot, let's call it small letter C. And then the distance between force F4 and the pivot, they call it small letter D. So should we rotate the beam in this direction, we can call this movement clockwise. 
So if this forces should go down, this one should go up. You can call this movement anti-clockwise. Now, to take clockwise moment, moment is product of force and perpendicular distance to the pivot. So we now have this force F1. The perpendicular distance to the pivot is A. We now become F1A, that is F1 times A. Plus, this force down here is F2. The perpendicular distance, that is, this dimension at 90 degrees to the pivot is smaller than B. We now have F2 times B. So this is a clockwise moment acting in this direction. Then going to the anti-clockwise moment. We move to the other side of the beam. There are two forces this side. So moment of this F3 about P is F3 times C. That is the force times the distance to the pivot. Then the other force F4 times D, which is the distance measured to the pivot. So having obtained that, for this body to remain steady, static at equilibrium, not uh, static equilibrium, I will know it is this, when the body is in the static equilibrium, it's either it's, it's not accelerating, or it's at rest, or it's at a set of uniform velocity. So for it to be at equilibrium, we can now say this moment and this should be what it is. So now I say, Say F1A plus F2B equal to F3 plus F4D. That means total clockwise is equal to total anti clockwise moment, as we explained initially. Then I also told you that is that you say that total clock moment is equal to total anti clock moment, or you say the algebraic sum of moment about any axis is zero. So, how do we prove that? If these two are equal, we can carry these ones to this side. We now have F1A plus F2B crossing over minus F3C plus F4D. We now be equal to zero. Carry all this to the other side, to the right hand side. Then, that is it. If you open the bracket, we now have F1A plus F2B minus F3C, open the bracket, and I have minus now F4D equal to that means the address of the, of the force of the moment will give you zero. Total clockwise is what total anti clockwise. Or you carry this one to this side, the address of the moment will now give us zero as we illustrated here. So that is the first condition for a body to be at equilibrium. Under the action of non prior coplanar forces. We now go to the second condition. And this first condition, of course, is the principle of moment. So, condition says that the vector sum of all the forces acting on the body will be zero. The vector sum, the vector sum. Of all the forces acting on the body must be equal to zero. How else do we put it in a simplified statement? So, in a simplified statement, we can say it means that the total upward forces must be equal to total downward forces. Total upward forces will be equal to total downward forces. So that is what it means. Total upward forces will be equal to total downward forces. For instance, let's assume that we have a single pivot system. One pivot here. Then we have the weight of the object acting downwards. We have another force F1 here. We have another force F2 over there. So there are three forces we have under the beam. F1, W, the weight, and F2. 
this is the downward force. So the total downward forces will now give me F1 plus W plus F2. That's the total downward forces. Then the upward force here is the reaction on the beam. The force that the pivot is at on the beam, we call it the reaction. So the upward force in the diagram is the reaction on the beam. So for this second condition, it means that for this object to be at equilibrium, then it means that R, the reaction, which is the upward force, will be equal to the sum of the downward forces. They will be equal to each other. Total upward will be equal to total downward forces. That is one condition for a body to be in a state of equilibrium when acted upon by non parallel or planar forces. Okay? Assuming that we have a two pivot system, this is a pivot, single pivot system. For instance, we have this. We have beam with two pivots. One this point, one this point. We have the weight for the beam here. We have force F1, we have force F2 down here. Then, how do we now prove this second condition? The downward force or the sum of downward forces will now become um, F1 plus W plus F2. Then the upward forces will be the reaction on the beam. Then the reaction here and the reaction there. You can call this R1, call this R2. It will now become R1 plus R2. So for this body to be at the equilibrium, that means upward force, which is R1 plus R2, we go to downward F1 plus W plus F2. So this is one condition for the body to be in a state of equilibrium on the action of a non parallel planar forces. So look at our work and understand what we are doing before we go over to the next task. So the next thing is, we are going to look at how to evaluate problems on moments involving a double pivot system. So let's have a sketch of a double pivot system. We have people here, how about that people here? So let this be a weight, the weight of the rod acting downward. It could be a uniform rod or it could not be a uniform rod. But the way it will have the effect of gravity as to have it. Let me call in a previous video. So, the distance between this and this, let's call it A, smaller than A. Distance between this one and that, let's call it smaller than B. So, let's have a force here, F1. The distance between F1 and this, let's be smaller than C. Let's have another force here, F2. The distance between this and that be small letter P. Okay? Now, since we have pivots, pivots exert force on the beam. And this for the pivot exert on the beam, we we'll call it the reaction forces. Let's call it R1 and call it place R2. So that is an example or an illustration of a double pivot system. How do we take moment on a double pivot system? What we'll do is, let's we'll take moment from any, let's call this point here P, call this point here Q. We we'll take moment from any of the pivots. So let me say, take moment, taking moment about a point, let me say about P, I want to take moment about this P. What it means is, I'll rotate this force about P. So my clockwise moment, so what I'm going to do it. My clock moment is going to be the reaction force, which is force, that R2, multiplied by the distance, distance from R2 to where I'm taking moment. That becomes R2 times, the distance will be from R2 to P, where I'm taking moment is A plus, that distance from here to this point, that is A plus B. 
that that will serve as my clockwise moment. Which other force will take the unit form with R2? Which other force goes with that clockwise? The force goes with that clockwise moment is also the is the force played before P, the way you're thinking people, and the force you see before P vote is F1 than there. So this R2 and F1 will move as clockwise. I come again, taking moment about P, that means rotating this force. This is because the fulcrum. So, uh, the pivot. So the moment is force. This force is making angle 90 to the P. So force times distance measured to the pivot. And this distance measured to the pivot P is A and B. A plus B are right together. So that is on the moment. Then which other force will be in clockwise movement with R2? I say it's the force that will exist before the P. And you can see that force is before the where the moment is P is F1. So now I say plus F1 times C. F1 times this time to the people is C. So this will serve as a clockwise moment. Then our anti-clockwise moment. Any other force on the beam becomes anti-clockwise. Anti-clockwise moment, you can see the force before the beginning here, the weight and the and F2. The weight and F2. And remember that you have any moment about B. So you measure all distances to that place in the moment. So the moment of this force weight about P becomes this force weight at the distance measured at 90 degrees to P and that distance is A which becomes W times A or the PD. Then the other force remaining there is this F2 which will also be anti-clockwise. Now you got F2 times the distance from F2 to the P volt. From F2 to this P volt is A B and E add them together into A plus B plus E. So this is anti-clockwise, while this is clockwise. And now you weigh the two of them and find the reaction R2. Afterwards, you cannot look for R1. So this is how you solve problems on the double pivot system. So stay connected. We are going over to problems and light problems on moments and then one is the single people and the one that copy in top people system. Um, and that number one says a meter rule is found to balance at the 48 cm mark when a body of full stop, where is it? When a body of mass 60 gram is suspended at the 6 cm mark, the balance point is found to be at the 30 cm mark. Calculate I, the mass of the beta rule. I, I, the distance of the balance point from the zero end. If the body we are moved to the 13 cm mark. So this is a school certificate uh, question. Let's go back to the question again. It says a meter rule is found to balance at the 48 cm mark when a body of mass 60 gram is suspended at the 6 cm mark. The balance point is found to be at the 30 cm mark. Calculate I, the mass for the meter rule, I, I, the distance for the balance point from the zero end if the body we are moved to the 30 cm mark. So this is the wake examination question. So let's look at this problem now. The meter rule is found to balance at the 48 cm mark. There is two stop here. And as I told you in the my first video, or rather second video on moment, I told that whenever a body is, the point where a body balances, when there is no load on it, is the center of gravity. So they were told that the meter rule balance at the 48 cm mark. That means that 48 cm is the center of gravity, the C of G. So that's the balance point. And it is this place that the mass of the body will act or the weight we add. Some may wonder why it's not 50 cm that I say that meter root balance at 50 cm. Look at the question again. The question does not say it's a uniform meter root. It's a meter root. There's no word there for trailing uniform. That means this meter root is not a uniform meter root. That's why it could balance at 50 cm mark. So being non uniform, that's why it balance at a value that is not at the midpoint. Okay, so this is the balance for which means the center of gravity. 
of the meter row. We go back to this one sentence. They are say, it says, when the body of mass 60 gram is suspended at the CCM mark, the body of mass 60 gram at the CCM mark. So let this point be CCM. The body of mass 60 gram is hanging here. Then they say the balance point is found to be 30, to be at the 30 CM mark. Mind you, let's go back to the problem. Before this body came up here, this was where the balance for the finite age was. You have the center of gravity. But when we now hung a body of 60 gram here, it can no longer balance at this place. Then as the balance point became was at 30, so the knife edge was now shifted to the 30. It's no longer balanced at the center because of the weight of this body. That is here. When I asked to calculate number one, the mass of the meter grew. So this is a single pivot problem. It's not an issue, it's a very simple task. What you have to do is identify the forces. The forces are the 60 gram force and the mass of the meter rule here. So all you have to do is find the perpendicular distance between each force and the pivot. From here to this point is 24. That is 30 minus 6. From 48 to this point is 18. That is 48 minus 30. If rotate the rule this way and take this place as clockwise, then this weight going down, this weight will go up at anti-clockwise. So our clockwise moment will now become the weight or the force, 60 grams, times the distance measured to the pivot, which is 24 cm. The anti-clockwise moment we we'll go to the other side of the of the pivot, the weight m, multiply by a distance of pivot which is 18 cm. Then taking the principle of moment that says clockwise, it must equal to anticlockwise. We'll now equate this to 60 gram times 24 cm. Will we'll now give us m times 18 cm. Make m the subject. M now becomes 60 gram times 24 cm over 18 cm. So when we solve this, our mass becomes 80 gram. So the mass of the meter root is 80 gram. So take a look at our work while we prepare for the next question. Yeah. We'll go to number two. I, I see on the same question it says we should calculate the distance of the balance point from the zero end in the body we are moved to the 13 cm mark. The distance of the balance point from the zero end in the body we are moved to the 13 cm mark. So what do we do? Let's clear this one. That number two question. We still sketch the meter rule. I remember that the center of gravity is at 48 from the previous question. And we have obtained the mass now as 80 gram. For the first calculation, the mass is 80 gram. Question is now, what if the balance point, what if the body, that the, which body, the body 60 gram mass given to us, we are moved to the 13 cm mark. So if the 60 gram is now at the 13 CM mark, where will it balance? Remember that in the first question, the 60 gram was previously on the CCM mark, but now it's moved to the 13 CM mark forward. So where will, be the, where will the body or the meter rule balance? That equation now. So what we'll do to solve this problem, let's call this point here, um, let's call it a P, the balance point, the new balance point. Now, what do we do? We find the distance between, we recognize two forces here, the weight or the mass of the body and the 60 gram mass. We find the distance between this mass and the, and the balance point pivot. It's going to be 48 minus P. Since we don't, we don't have value here. And the distance between this point and this point, which is going to be P minus 13. So, as we normally do, we can take the place as clockwise and take this end as anti-clockwise. So clockwise moment will now become the force acting down there, 60, multiplied by the regular distance to the pivot, 
p minus 13. That gives us 60p minus, if you open the bracket, that gives us 780. So this expression stands for the clockwise moment. Then for the anti-clockwise moment, what do we do? For any clockwise moment, you will now have 80, that the force acting down there, multiplied to the, by the distance to the pivot, 80 into 48 minus p. So we multiply and open the bracket. We make use of our calculator. That is 80, that is going to be 0. 64, carry 6. 32, that is 38. 3840 minus 80p. So this expression stands for the anti clockwise moment. Then obeying the principle of moment, let's use the right side of the board. Obeying the principle of moment, we'll now take clockwise to be equal to anti clockwise moment. That is, we, we equate this expression to this expression. To go over to that place, we we'll have 60p minus 780 equal to 3840 minus 80p. We we'll collect like terms. Now 60p plus 80p equal to 3840 plus 780. That's going to give us 140p equal to, let's add the last one, 3840 plus 780 give us 4620. 4620. Making p the subject, p becomes 4620 all over 140. We'll divide, we we'll have 33 centimeters. So let's go to the diagram. So P is at this CM. The distance of this P from the zero end. So here it's going to be at 3 CM. With at 3 centimeter. So that is your problem. Look at our work once more. And then understand the concept. So we'll go back to number two problem down there. So number two is a non-uniform rod SY of mass 40 kg and length 5.0 meters lies on the horizontal ground. Its center of gravity is 2.0 meter from the end X. Calculate the particle force P that will just be sufficient to lift the end Y from the ground. Why then there's conclusion there? Okay, let's look at the first expression. Let's go through it again. A non-uniform rod SY of mass 40 kg and length 5 meters, 5.0 meters, lies on the horizontal ground. E center of gravity is 2.0 meter from the end X. Calculate the vertical force P that will just be sufficient to lead the end Y from the ground. So sketching the problem on the board, here is the rod SY. And for the question, the, board, the rod is non-uniform. If the length is 5 meters. So you cannot say that the center of gravity is going to be 2.5 no because it is a non-uniform rod. So the center of gravity cannot be at the midpoint again because the object is not uniform. However, it is uniform, the center of gravity will be at the half of the this is 2.5. Okay, let's go to the question and find where the center of gravity is. Weight is 40 kg, length is 5.0, lies on the horizontal ground. The center of gravity is 2 meter out, 2 meter from the end X. Okay. Because we are told that the Center gravity is 2 meters from the end, so this is where we have the center of gravity, C of G, 2 meters from the end end. And as I said in the previous video, the center of gravity will act only, the weight will act as center of gravity, and the weight of the rod is 40 kg, which is less than 400 newton using mg, converting the 40 to newton, apply by the center of gravity, half 400 newton. So, which is now acting at the center of gravity. They now say, calculate the particle force P, the force P that will be just sufficient to lift the rod 
We leave the hand wide on the ground. Okay, we've got the diagram again. The force that will leave the rod on the ground when placed at Y, a particle force, they call the force T. So draw the line of the force here. And the force is called P. So the what force are you going to apply at Y to leave this end from the ground? So what do we do? Remember that the length of the rod is 5 meters. So we are dealing with two forces here. The force down, we have a force here, which is the weight. How about that force here? So we can take a moment. So when you want to lift it, the, you look at this problem, there is no pivot. So there is no pivot on it, there is no knife edge. So you start wondering, where will be your turning point? Where are you going to take moment from? When there is no pivot, remember that you are lifting it. When you want to lift this place up, this place will be on the ground. So it will be on the ground while you take this place up. So this place become your turning point. So we are taking moment about S. So take a moment about S, taking the place as our turning point. So this movement will be taken as clockwise. So clockwise moment will now become the force P and the distance measured to where you're taking your pivot as. This assumes that the dimensionally pivot here. So the distance from here to that plane is 5. So that gives us 5 P. So if I take anti-clockwise moment, you take anti-clockwise moment, and I have the force down here multiplied by the distance to the same pivot turning point, which is 2 times 400, which is 800. The equating moment, clockwise moment is equal to anti-clockwise moment. When I say 5p equal to 800 meter. So P becomes 800 over 5. And that gives us 160 Newton. So that is the value of the force P. So, having done that, we we'll go over the second part of the equation. Go to the work as we go to the second part of the equation. says, the last sentence says, why would the force be if applied at the end S not be, not be sufficient to lift the end S from the ground? Why would the force be if applied at the end S not be sufficient to lift the end S from the ground? We go back to the diagram again. So, this is our S already. We're going to draw another diagram. Another diagram here. This is the same beam of wood S, Y. They say now, if the force, which we calculated here, the force P, which we got at 160, is applied at end S, why won't it be able to lift the end S from the ground? So, what do we do now? We still recognize that the center of gravity is 2 meters away from X. Why the center of gravity? And then the weight of the wood remains 400 Newton for the previous uh, exercise. So what do we do? Here is 2 meters and the whole rod is 5 meters. So here is 2.0 meters. Many meters will be 3.0 meters. Because 3 plus 2 gives you 5. So what do we do? We take a moment. Now at this point, now in this condition now, when we are lifting this place up, this place becomes a turning point. We imagine we will now create an imaginary pivot here. Because this place will stick the ground up to this place. I will lift S. Why would take the ground up to lift S up? Now we we'll take moment about the point Y. So we'll take moment, taking moment about Y. So we now have clockwise, which is moment, which is 160 times the distance of the people, 20 times from here to the people is 5 meters, that is 2 plus 3 times 5, that is about 800 newton meter. So now it's also take anti clockwise moment. Before, 
found the time seven that he was one thousand and two hundred years old. So the reason why uh, the the end s cannot be used to if the form should apply at the end s is because the anti clockwise moment that is the moment of the force of one bending from the degree away from the object is higher than the moment which is the force of one sixty newton. So one sixty newton represents the force of force speed. Had it been that the moment which is the force of one sixty newton is higher than the moment of the force of hundred newton, the object would have, would have gone up from the ground. But with the fact that the moment exerted by the force of one sixty newton is less than the moment exerted by the weight of the object. That is why the object will remain on the ground, even though the force is applied on the the force P, which is once is applied at the end S. So stay connected now as we move to the last section of this uh, of this topic, which will involve the double people system. The, the, the last section of this topic. We have a uniform beam. 6.0 meter long and weighing 4 kg rest on suppose B and Q placed left and right 1 meter from each end of the beam weights of mass 10 kg and 8 kg are placed near B and Q respectively. One each end of the B. Calculate the reactions at B and Q. So let's take it once more. Let's take it once more. Uniform beam, six meters long, and weighing four kg, rests on two on suppose B and Q. Place left and right 1.0 meter from each end of the beam. Weights of mass 10 kg and 8 kg are placed near B and Q respectively, one on each end of the beam. Calculate the reaction at B and Q. So go to the board to draw the false diagram. We have a uniform body. The length is 6 meters. And the center of gravity, which I call C of G, will be half of the length, which is 3 meters. So we'll draw a horizontal line, present the beam. That's the beam. And then we'll locate the center of gravity, which is at the 3 meter point. And they say the weight is 4 kg. We we'll have a 4 kilogram force acting downwards. So we can write it at 40 newton, taking note of weight equal to mass times acceleration gravity. G is 10 meter per second square. So 4 times 10 gives us 40. So the weight as at the center of gravity, the uniform object. I will say it rests on suppose P and Q. Suppose P and Q place left and right one meter from the from each end of the beam. So we have a support here, we can call a pivot, P, which is one meter from this end, and the other one, another support Q, which is also one meter from the end here. So we we'll now have the said waist of mass 10 gram and 8 gram are placed near P and Q. 10 kg and 8 kg are placed near B and Q, respectively one on each end of the beam. So, one at each end of the beam. So, this is the end. Put one on the way. The first way there is 10 kg, which is 10 newton when compared to weight, multiplied by 10. That's the due to gravity. Now, at this end, you have the weight of 8 kg, which is 80 newton placed at this end. And we ask to calculate the reactions at B and Q. So reaction means the force acting upwards at P. They call this one R1 and call this reaction R2. 
So this is the GCE question. Right, so the question is pretty difficult. Not as simple as they have a single keyboard, but we're going, to, we're going to simplify it. So what do we do? Before we start solving this problem, um, earlier on we tried to solve problem on, on double keyboard system. Before we start with this problem, we'll find the remaining distances, the distance from this point to this point, and from the way here at this point to this point. Make it easier for us. If from the zero end to here is three meters, and this distance is one meter, then this distance is going to be two meters. That is three minus one zero to two. Also, this place is going to be two meters, because uh, this is half of the meter, with three minus one zero to two. So two plus one is three, two plus one is three. Three plus three will give you six, this is the full length of the beam. So we are going to look for the reaction at R1, at beam B, and beam Q, that is R1 and R2. So how do we solve this problem? Taking moment at P. Now this point P. Moment is force times perimeter distance. So that means this place becomes the returning point. To take the moment at P, what I'll do is I'll rotate this B moving up. So this force is going up, and this place is taken as a, as, as a turning point. So the clockwise moment. We know it is this moment is force times perimeter distance. So that becomes the force that the reaction for the R2 and the distance measured from the from Q to this place yeah, to P where the moment. Distance from Q to P is 2 plus 2, which is 4. So we're gonna give us 4 R2. That is the distance times the force. Then, as I described in the earlier part of this video, which other force will move uniform or clockwise with R2? The force that will move in uniform, in uniformity with R2, is the force that will be, is, that is before the P force we are in the moment, which is the 100 Newton force. So this R2 and this 100 Newton force placed before the point of a rotation is we take move clockwise. So this one, the moment of this force about this one, now we got 100 times 1, here is 1. 100 times 1. So that will give us 4 R2 plus 100. So this expression stands for a clockwise moment. Then going to anti-clockwise moment. So how do we solve anti-clockwise moment? We now go to the system again. So we are taking care of this force. We are taking care of this force. The remaining forces now become we are anti clockwise. You still move them to the point of pivot. So, this is 40, the weight is anti clockwise. So, moment of this force about this point because this 40, that the distance measured to be which is, the, which is 2 meters, that is 40 times 2. Plus, and that force we have in here is 80 newton. And the distance measured to the pivot, pivot is at this point. The distance from this force to this pivot is. 2 plus 2, 4 plus 1, 5. That becomes 5 times 80. So that gives us 80 plus 400. That gives us 480. So having done that, we now move and say clockwise moment equals anti clockwise moment. So we'll do that. So the clock moment is. The expression 4 RT plus 100. Anti clockwise is 480. So, we now collect items. 4 RT becomes 480 minus 100 will give us 380. Our RT becomes 380 divided by 4. And when we do that, we will get 380 divided by 4 will give us 95 Newton. So the reaction, the reaction at the pivot Q, the spot Q is 95 Newton. Now to find R1, do we need to start taking moment about Q, repeat the process about Q? Yes, it will work for us, but that will be a waste of time. To find R1, remember the second condition 
for objects to be at equilibrium. We say that total clockwise forces, total upward forces, or equal to total downward forces. The upward forces are R1 plus R2, that are the reaction forces. It was downward 100 plus 40 plus 80. So that gives you R1 plus R2 minus 220. If you add them together, then R1 becomes 220 minus R2, which is 220 minus R2, which is 95, which I got in the board. So 220 minus 95 to give us 125 Newton. So the reactions at reaction R1 is 25 and that of R at R2 is 95. So to get R2, we we'll apply the principle of moment to solve for R2. And to get R1, we we'll apply the other condition for it, which says that total upward forces is what total downward forces. So must you take moment from P for the left hand side anytime? No, you can still take moment from Q and repeat the same process. You take moment at Q, that means you're going to get you're going to get your R1 first as 125. Then you can apply total upward or total downward to find your R2 as 95. You get some answer. So we'll take a look at our work as we go to the next question. question that says a uniform rod 8 meters long weighing 5 kg is supported horizontally by two vertical parallel strings V and Q at distances 2 meters and 6 meters from one end Weights of 1 kg, 1.5 kg, and 2 kg are attached at distances 1 meter, 5 meter, and 7 meter, respectively, from the same end. Find the tension in each vertical string. Repeat the statement again. A uniform rod, 8 meters long, weighing 5 kg, is supported horizontally by two vertical parallel strings P and Q and at distances 2 meters and 6 meters from one end weights of 1 kg and 1.5 kg and one weights of 1 kg, 1.5 and 3 kg are attached at distances 1 meter, 5 meter and 7 meter respectively from the same end Find the tension in each vertical string. So let's look at this problem, problem and then draw the four diagram. The rod, the length is 8 meters, and it's a uniform rod. So see the length is 8 meters. The center of gravity will now be at 8 over 2, that is half of it, 4 meters. This is the uniform material. And the weight is 5 kg, converted to Newton. 5 times 10, 50 meters, taking 10 as a section due to gravity. So let's draw the four diagram. This is the rod. This is the 4 meter mark at the center of gravity. The weight which is 50 newton is acting down here at the center of gravity. So it's supported by two, it's supported by two vertical parallel threads, B and Q. So there are two threads B and Q. Where are they attached? And at distance is two meters and three meters from one end. So this B and Q are tied at distance is two meters and six meters from one end. So let's consider this end. We can call this end S. We can call this end Y. So for this end S, the first row or the first string is two meters from this end. And that string we call it P. Okay. Then I uh, have another. The string is called P. Okay. Then that is tension on it. Then another string is about six meters from the same end. 
similar for the same uh, dimensions. Um, we have another string here going up. Six meters should be at the beyond four meters. So if here is six meters, have another string here, a string of Q tied at the six meters, uh, six meters mark, six meters from this end. So from this end to here is two meters. While from this end to the other end to this other one is six uh, meters. Okay. So that is uh, explained. There was a we have waves of one kg. 1.5 kg and 2 kg. Waves of 1 kg, 1.5 and 2 are attached at distances 1 meter. So 1 kg is attached at 1 meter, this, uh, then 1.5 at 5 meters, and then 2 kg at 7 meters from the same end. Okay, let's go back to that. We have a weight of 1 kg. So let's hear the 1 meter. So if this place is 1 meter, Remember that from here to this point is one, 2 meters. So here will give us 1 meter divided into 2. That will give us another 1 meter. So that the 2 will be 1 plus or minus 2 meters. So the weight that is here is the weight of, a, of 1 kg. And 1 kg is equal to 10 meters using this formula to convert 1 meter end from this end. The other weight of 1.5 kg is attached 5 meters. From the same end. So where we don't have five meters, this is four meter. If I add extra one meter to it, and I have five meters. One plus four. The middle is four. Add extra one meter to this, I have five meters. So it has to be five meters. So the way we're going to have here is one point, which is 15 newton multiplied by 10 to convert to newton. Then under weight of 2 kg. Attached at a distance of seven meter from the same end, so I have another weight of uh, seven, another weight of two kg, seven meter. Remember that this row is at six meters, six meters end. So seven meter means I'm adding extra one meter to it. I have a weight of two kg, which is twenty newton. That is the weight twenty newton. That is six plus. This here is six already. 6 plus 1 gives you 7 attached uh, from or every attachment is from the end S. Okay. Having done that, we have to find the tension on the strings. So this is a tough one. We're going to solve it. To solve the problem, we have to take to find the tension, we may take moment about T. Before we go to start taking moment, we're going to find these distances that are missing here. So if from here to the if from zero to the center is four meter, which is the center of gravity, and from this point to here is two meter. The remaining distance here, of course, will be will be extra two meters because two plus this two will give you four, which is the main point. One plus one give you two, which is what you have here. Then this distance is four already. This distance remaining here is one meter because we know that this weight is at the at the 5 C, 5 meter mark. So 4 plus 1 gives us 5. Having done that, we'll continue. Then we we'll know that here is already 6. Here is 7. Here is from this end to here is 6. Where you have the where you have Q. From this end to the midpoint is 4. Here is 5. And of course, here is, here is 7. So here is 6, and this is extra 1, you know, 7. Now, the remaining distance here will be, here will be 1. 1. 1 as habit above. Bring it down. Let's go check whether we are right. The full length of this rod, okay, is 8 meters. So the, the thread P is hanging 2 meters from the end, X. Can see the two meters. Q is hanging six meters from the end for this end S. Weight of one kg is ten meter is hanging one meter from the end S. Weight of five kg, which is uh, okay, the five kg is the weight that the weight of the meter rule. Okay? It must be at the center of the four meter. Weight of one point five kg, which is fifteen newton, is hanging at what is as five meters from the end S. Center is 4. 
This is extra 1, so 4 plus 1 is 5. Weight of 2 kg hangs at what distance? At 6 what? 6, 6, 7 meters from the end ends. If here is 4, 5, 6, and then 7. So we are right. So having done that, we will not take moment. We we'll take moment. Taking moment. About, take one of the, of the points, about B. That B is this point. So let's cause this body to rotate about B, so that B becomes the turning point. Taking one about B, so we now take this Q stand for our, our tension. So let's, okay, let's just let the tension on this one be D2, the tension on this one be D1. So we have B and Q to present the points where the rows are, are tied. So take a moment about this point B. Clock by moment will now become equal to. So this is our turning point here now. Will now become this force D2 multiplied the, by the distance measured to the people that were in the moment. So the force D2, the distance from this D2 to the people will now be let's get it right. 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1, 4. That is, add the distance from here to this point, that is 4 meters. So going to give us 4 D2 plus which other force would move in clockwise manner with this D2? I told you the force that will move in the same manner in uniform with this D2 will be the force that exists before the point where at the moment, and that is the 10 Newton force. So it's going to be 10 Newton times the distance to the people, which is 1 meter. Now we got plus 10 times 1. Now give us 4 D2 plus 10. This is expression for our clockwise moment. Then going to the anti-clockwise moment. To take anti-clockwise moment, what do we do? So we are taking this force and this as, as our clockwise. The remaining force becomes anti-clockwise. The weight is anti-clockwise, so I will take all distances to the turning point, to the pivot. So this 50 times 2, the distance from here to the pivot is 2 meters, that becomes 2 times 50 plus, we we'll move this force, 15 newton. The distance from 15 newton to the pivot is 2 and 1, 2 plus 1, that is 3. That becomes 15 times 3 plus again. And that force there is 20 newtons. The distance between the 20 newton and the pivot is 2 plus 1, 3 plus 1, 4 plus 1, 5. When I become uh, 5 times 20. So we take a look at our work and see there's no mistake on it. So solving it out, we're going to have 100 plus 45 plus 100. And that will give us 245. So having done that, we can now equate moments because for this period, I think we want the condition is that clockwise or equal to anti-clockwise. Now I have 42 plus, I can work it over here, 42 plus 10 equal to 245. This expression represents our clockwise moment. Why this one represents our anti-clockwise moment? This one. So we now have 40 equal to 245 minus 10, which gives us 235. Then to get D2, D2 becomes 235 over 4. So let's solve that. 235 divided by 4. So as we look at it, as we use our calculator, we can look at our work and see how neat it is. Q. Now to find T1, 
you can as soon as take moment about P, but that will be a waste of time. What you do, you apply the second condition for April, which say that total clockwise, total upward forces, or we want total downward forces. To find T1, what do we do? We now say T1 plus T2 is the total upward forces. The tensions is equal to total downward, which is 10 plus 50 plus 15 plus 20. So T1 plus T2 now give us that is 60. 80, 95 Newton. So our T1 becomes 95 minus T2. We're going to be 95 minus, we've got in T2 here as 58.75. 95 minus 58.75. So minus 95 minus, that will give us. 36.25 T1 36.25 Newton. So these are the tensions on the two strings T1 on P, the tension that is that 6.25, Y T to the tension on the string Q is 58.75. So you can go through our work and then apply the principle in some square problem that you face in your daily work. So we appreciate those who are viewing this channel, those that subscribe to this channel. So if you are not subscribed, you are coming across the channel for the first time. You can as well subscribe by tapping on the channel button, the subscription button. You see it uh, under the channel's name, Best Science Brain. Below the profile picture, you tap on the subscription button. That looks like a tiny bell only once and get subscribed so you'll be seeing our videos from time to time. And take care that you share with the videos to your fellow um, classmates or classmates for them to see and appreciate uh, what we're doing in this channel and learn physics, chemistry, and further maths in the daily activities. You can learn online, you can help yourself online. As you do your studies, you can download the videos and watch them. And then take your time, understand the concept, and then apply it. Whether it's chemistry, whether it's physics, or mathematics coming your way, or the practical studies are also coming, practical concepts, practical uh, videos are also coming your way in each channel. You check the channel, the channel, the videos, some practicals, and many, many more are coming. Many more topics are being loaded uh, every week. So, take care, and have a wonderful time. Thank you.